Photon GI cache is the way of pre-calculating light. It tracks the photons before render start. The effect is the map that can be used as a guidance for the engine. It allows rendering the image much more efficiently by giving the engine information on how it should behave in every situation. It supports also indirect and caustic cache, what makes it useful for a large variety of the scenes. Photon GI is not supported by bidirectional path tracing. Photon count is the limit of the photons that will be used to build the cache. This value is related to the size of your scene. The bigger scene, the more photons you will need. Photon depth is maximum amount of bounces that a photon can make. The rule is similar to max bounces in the light path tab. The higher the value is, the higher quality cache will be. If you have a scene where light can bounce a lot, like interior with a small window, it is recommended to go with a bit higher number as it will allow calculating shadow correctly. If you don't have a lot of indirect light, you can go with lower numbers. For more of the cases, range from 6 to 12 should work fine. To make you sure that your setting was good and your cache looks like it should, you can preview it using debug. Choose desired cache and hit render. You will see then how it looks like. Let's take a look at indirect cache. You have two presets here that are called final render and preview. The difference between them is the speed of rendering and the quality. There is also a custom option that is comparable to the noise threshold under the halt conditions tab. The higher halt threshold percentage you will set, the higher noise will be accepted in the image. Photon GI cache will never use more photons than the number set in photon count. This cache is not behaving very well in complex areas or dark corners. That is why there is a way of excluding Photon GI usage in some areas. This function is a brute force radius scale. In debug set indirect path mix preview. Pure blue value represents the area where the light's cache will be used. Pure red is for brute force so basically excluded from the cache. Setting the value low will increase the use of light cache. There is another method that allows you to specify where Photon GI will be used. Set preview to indirect now. Glossiness threshold allows you to exclude the materials with roughness value lower than the threshold. It works the same way as the glossiness threshold in add light tracing function. To simplify its work, light indirect cache will treat faces of the object with a similar angle as one face. This can be set by changing normal angle. The last setting is an automatic lookup radius that is checked by default. It is recommended to leave this as default, but if you need to do some tweaks, uncheck it and set the lookup radius manually. The bigger the scene, the higher the radius should be. How you should set your Photon GI cache and is it worth the effort? It depends. If you are rendering a simple scene, you can spend more time tweaking the cache than rendering. But if you are rendering animation or you have a really challenging scene, it can be rational to spend a few minutes to tweak the cache to save the hours of rendering. Photon GI cache offers also caustic light cache. You want to use this option only if you have caustic in your scene. I have talked before about some limitations when rendering caustic using unidirectional path method. This option solves the problem. When you have caustic that should appear on the reflective surfaces, it won't be visible until you use caustic light cache. Max size determines the number of the generated photons. Lookup radius and normal angle work the same way as in indirect light cache. As caustic is a bit more complex than rendering reflections on simple Lambertian surfaces, you have the possibility to constantly refine cache during rendering. The longer time the render will take, the highest quality cache it will use. To have this possibility, we need to enable a periodic update. Step samples will decide how many samples must be processed to rebuild the cache. Radius reduction is responsible for refinement progression. Every next rebuild, the lookup radius will be smaller to allow more detailed and less noisy rendering. Using this setting, after 8 samples, lookup radius will be 0.072 meters and it will be reduced progressively till it will be equal to minimum radius value. The longer time the render will take, the higher the quality cache will be used. And the last thing I will discuss in this video is persistence, what basically allows you to save your cache or use one that you have been saved before.
So that's it for the Photon GI cache, there is a little bit more information, so if anything needs to be explained, let me know in comments. Prepare yourself for the last but not least video in this series, and don't forget to leave your feedback.